in all of our lives as believers, there's moments and times there has to be a total surrender. And there's, and there's pockets and areas of our life sometimes that we don't want to let go of. It's just a reality. There's things that in order for, in order for God to use us, but also to pour out all that he desires to pour out on us or in us and through us and do what he wants to do through us. There's areas of our life that we've still got to learn how to surrender to him on. You know, uh, in the first sermon, uh, first message this morning, you go back and listen to it. Pastor Phil preached, and it, it was one of the scriptures that he quoted was out, out of Galatians 2.20. It says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. The life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. You and I, there's things that, are we too, truly and totally crucified in area, er, every area of our lives? And I believe that we're still learning how to let go of some of the things that we like to hold on to. You know, you can take all this, but don't take this. Come on, it's just, it's just a reality. There's things in our life, and you know what? We're all there. There's things that I've got to let go of in my life at times, and I'm, I'm holding on to too long, and I need God. I need to just roll the care of it over on the Lord because He cares for me. And, and it's just a process of, of our growth, and it's okay. So whatever that is for you, whatever that is right now in your personal life, you know what? You've got to lay that at the feet of Jesus. You're the only one that can do that. I can't do that for you, Pastor Justin, Pastor Phil. None of us can do that. None, the people that love you the most cannot do that for you. But I believe with all my heart, until you remove that area of your, whatever that is in your area of your life, then God can't pour out what you're believing for in other areas of your life. Come on. It's just, it's, you know, you can't put something in a cup when a cup's already full. You ever try to put something in something? It's, there's no more room, even though my wife's a master stuffer. Sometimes there's just no more room in some of the areas. And in our lives, there's God's trying to do something big in our lives sometimes. But the reality of it is, is we got, too, we, we got it filled up with too many other things for him to do something with it. And we got to let it go. We just got to, you know, it's, that's the ultimate trust of God, you know, taking those things that you dearly, that hold you hold dear to yourself more than anything else and just saying, God, I give that to you as well. And it's sometimes it's a daily choice. Come on. Sometimes it's a daily choice. There's times where I've got to crucify my flesh daily, right? In some areas of my life. Now there's some things in my life I've learned to not let that control my life anymore. But then there's other areas of my life that I'm still going, oh, Jesus, help me. Come on. I'm just being transparent with you. That's any of us and all of us. And there's nothing wrong with that. So don't beat yourself up about that. But recognize that, you know what? The greater one that lives on the inside of you, he created you. He knew those things were in your life already. And he's saying, hey, greater is me that is in you than he that is in the world that's trying to run that area of your life. I'm bigger than that, and I'm bigger than your mistakes. And I can, I, can, I can take your lemon and make a lemonade out of it, whatever that looks like in your life. But it does take me and you making a decision to go, I give that to you, God. And there's some things in your life you may have to do it all throughout the day, taking those thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ. There's some things in our lives that we all have to just crucify constantly, and that's okay. There'll come a point in time in your life where you don't have to do it anymore. But there's moments and times in our life that we just got to keep bringing it to Jesus. Jesus, you got this. Jesus, I trust you with this. I trust you with this area of my life. I trust you with that area of my life. Whether it's kids, whether it's finances, whether it's your future, your husband, your wife, your uh, whatever situation you're dealing with in your life, your personal uh, confidence of who you are in Christ Jesus. No, I am the righteousness of God. No, God does love me. No matter what I've done in the past, leave the past and the behind. Amen? We'll leave you behind in the past. Okay? All right? Akuna Matata, right? We got that? There's some things that we just, and some of those things, they try to come back all the time. Uh, Brother Jesse preached an old sermon, don't let Dracula come up out of the coffin. Once you crucified your flesh two in one, leave it in the coffin. Don't let that old nature come back out. Amen? And sometimes you got to, you know, do the Heisman. Bam. Do what you have to do to make sure that that doesn't come back up in your life. 
You know, and, and I know it's, it's important for us to do that. But that's part of what that song's talking about. Surrendering every area of my life. You can have it all, Lord. I want, I want to give you it all. And there's things in me. That's why the Bible says, judge yourself, lest you be judged. There's times we have to be real with ourselves. And we go, you know what? I'm, I'm messing up in an area of my life. And I need to make sure that I, I bring that before God and call upon him so that he can show me great and mighty things in that area of my life. Because he, he wants to do that. But I do have to surrender that to them. I'm going to quote my favorite poem. I actually was ministering to somebody this week and, and actually quoted it to him. But it's, it's, I brought my broken dreams to God. And it's something I learned. I was in high school when I learned this poem. But it was, I brought my broken dreams to God because he was my friend. But instead of leaving him in peace to work alone, I stuck around and I tried to help with ways that were my own. At last I snatched him back and cried, how can you be so slow? He said, my child, what could I do? You never let them go. And there's, I'm telling you, there's things in our lives that, man, God's just wanting to just let it go. Let go. I got you. I got you covered. I'm taking care of it. Just quit putting your hand in the cookie jar and let me do my thing. Amen? So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your anointing that's in this house, Lord. We thank you, Father, that you're the restorer of the breach, that you make all things better than the way they were before. And we recognize that in some areas of our lives, we need to truly let go so you can do what only you can do. And that makes make this area of our lives exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask, hope, or think. We look unto you, Jesus, and we call upon you. I'm going to ask you to pray this prayer with me. Say, say this with me. Say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I call upon you to help me in this area of my life. I roll the care of this area of my life over on you because you care for me. Holy Spirit, strengthen me not to take that care upon my own shoulders or in my own life anymore. It is yours. I'm your work. And you will finish that work. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, 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 amen. Well, you can be seated if you'd like. Worship team, amazing, as always. Wasn't that good? And they don't need your applause. They don't, that's not what they... But, you know, we were talking about this, even Pastor Phil and I were talking about this in the green room, just in between services. But, you know, when you're flowing in the anointing, you know, the songs, the worship... The message, you know, we didn't know what each other, what we were preaching this morning, which is always fun. But, uh, you know, when you get here and, you know, they're in the same vein, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like God puts two messages together coming from uh, two different perspectives, but they roll in together. Isn't that cool? It's really awesome. And so that's the way you, that's when you know the Holy Spirit is uh, leading your pastors uh, we thank God for Pastor Justin and that. They're going to be in Africa for another uh, almost two and a half weeks. Y'all be praying for them. They've got some divine appointments. We're believing for marvels, wonders, and extraordinary manifestations of his greatness. They will be ministering, but also they will receive an impartation as well. We have our uh, our Africa, our director of Africa is over there, and that's who they're actually with. And uh, that's John. Y'all remember John Ben Dixon? He ministered here at the church uh, last year during the um, minister's conference, I think it was back in October or November. Wonderful. Him and his wife both are just amazing. And uh, they they are with them. And then also, just to put a plug in, uh, at the end of October, going into November, the Ben Dixons are actually coming over here. And they're going to do a prayer conference with us on a Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And then we'll finish up on that Sunday night. And so uh, mark your calendars for that. Look at our church calendar and get all those details. But that's where pastors are. They're actually doing that with them right now in Africa. And they're going to be in a couple of different places. So keep them in your prayers. Amen. And uh, we should always keep them in our prayers daily. You should be, we should always be praying for our leadership and those who are set in authority. They're amazing. Our pastors are just wonderful. And uh, we've put together an amazing, he, they, God has sent them an amazing team. And some of you are a part of that team. And if you're not, we'd love to have you come be a part of that team because God's doing some great things here to Here's your faith. Amen. 
I'm excited about this morning. I always like, you know, everybody ministers a little different. And I realized this morning watching Pastor Phil preach. He's a preacher. You know what I'm saying? He, he, I mean, he, he's done the tithes and the offerings, and I've seen him teach on a little bit on Wednesday nights, but he likes to preach, and I like that, you know? Um, he's got such a depth of the knowledge of the Word of God, and there's such a, he's an anchor to what we do here, and we're so grateful to have him and Mr. Diane, and it's going to be fun to see what uh, God has in store for us. Amen? Now, look, uh, we want to talk to you. I want to talk to you tonight. About a month and a half, when we got back from youth camp, I ministered a message on the baptism of the Holy Ghost. One of the things that's in the book that God's having me write, and uh, in the process of it, I know that for me, that was monumental in my relationship with God. I would not be where I am today if I didn't receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. It's so huge, and it's so powerful. And, but there's more to it than just, hey, I got my prayer language, and, uh, you know, that's it. You know, yeah, I speak in tongues. Well, what are you doing? What do you get when, you, when you're speaking in tongues? What is taking place? And um, earlier on in the week, um, I knew this message was brewing on the inside of me, and as the week continued to unfold, it kept rising up. And I'm going to talk to you about being led by the Holy Spirit this morning. It's so important that uh, you understand that even when we prayed a while ago, I was thinking about this. Your flesh gets in the way more than Satan gets in the way sometimes. Come on. And so, uh, some, uh, don't, so don't blame everything on Satan, okay? He just picked, you, picked on you in the right area, and then you just kept letting it be there, okay? So what we got to do is we, we have got to put our flesh under in some areas. But I don't like to try to focus on putting my flesh under more than I like to pay attention to what the Holy Spirit's telling me. Because I'm led by the Holy Spirit, then I'll do, I won't ever go to the flesh. Uh, I was uh, visiting with Brother Jesse last week for just a few minutes, and he says, you know, Rick, I don't even think about sinning. I don't have time to think about sinning. He says, I'm always, I'm so busy about doing what God's told me to do. You know, I don't even think about sin anymore. It's so very seldom that I ever, and, that, and that's so, what is it, what is he saying? That you're, you're so intent to do whatever it is that's God telling you that you stop thinking about that area that you like to have control over because all of a sudden it's not even number one in your life anymore. God is. Right? And so the more emphasis you just face, focus on the prize rather than all the obstacles that are going on around you, then the quicker you're going to get to the destiny that you're trying to reach. Right? Come on. You know, I've run a couple of marathons. I like long distance running. I enjoy that. Not everybody does, but early on, they'll teach you one of the things that you do as a runner is you'll look at a plane. You'll fix yourself, fixate yourself in a, in a distance. So, because if you just focus in on the moment, sometimes those legs feel like there's nothing down there anymore, or they're, they're like weigh 500 pounds and you're trying to pick each one of them up at the same time. It's ridiculous. So what do you do though? You don't focus, you don't focus on where you are. You focus on where you want to be. Come on. And so that's our, that's part of our responsibility. So talking about coming out of, in some ways, coming out of that baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues, we are a spirit filled word of faith church. What I mean by that is that we believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. We also believe and know that the speaking in tongues is a manifestation of what the Word of God says. We don't separate them. We're not just a Holy Ghost, get all crazy in here and nobody knows why we got crazy. Come on. Seriously, I've been there. That's what kept me away. Part of what kept me away from the baptism of the Holy Ghost, man, I went as a fifth grade in high school, I mean, fifth grade in, in school, I went to a church, man, there were people flipping out, rolling up under the pews, and I thought, i never going, and I didn't, I didn't, I'm never going back to that church, you know, and so I, I thought, they're crazy, man, I have no earthly idea what's going on, and so the reason being is a lot of times you can get in the ditch in one way or the other, and so we're not going to separate ourselves from the Word of God, and neither is the Holy Spirit. He's not sent to do anything but lift up Jesus. That's his whole role. So you get something from God that you think is God, but it's not in the word of God. Guess what? It's not God. And if someone comes to you with something outside of what the word of God is saying, it's not God. Even though they're funny feeling or they're, Ooh, this, I feel this on the inside of me, so-and-so. You know what I'm saying? You got to recognize the word of God will never, the Holy Spirit will never separate itself from the word of God. All right, so let's look at some cool scriptures. The Lord told me, um, just for you to know, Kelly, I'm going to go backwards with these scriptures. So I'm going to go to Romans chapter 8, verse 4. As um, This is just, um, man, I, this is one of my favorite messages, actually. But uh, Romans 8, 4, 14, and then uh, 25 through 28. In verse 4, it says this, The righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh. 
Okay, so that's what I was talking to you just a second ago about. Be led by the Spirit, not by your flesh. Just focus more on the Spirit, trying to tune yourself in. It's like a, has anybody remember those transistor radios or uh, you're trying to get a channel or you're, you know, if you're skimming through the radio still, even if it's digital, if you get one, you know, one one hundredth of a, it doesn't get perfect clarity, right? And so sometimes you're learning by being led by the Spirit, you're trying to tune yourself into what it is that God's saying to you. Okay, so he says, so you'll learn how to be led by the Spirit. He says, but after the Spirit, for as many as, this is a very popular message or very popular scripture in verse 14. It says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Okay. And I hear that preached and I, but I watch people in ministry. I watch them in church that are supposed to be stalwarts. And I'm going, where are they going? What are they doing? Because the Spirit of the Lord, just because the Word of God says something doesn't mean that that's what you're supposed to do at that moment. Come on. The Holy Spirit is going to confirm the Word with signs following. So you got to be, you got to understand, here, this is important, and, and this is just fundamental. And, and the Spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the earth. How many know what scripture that is? Genesis chapter 1, verse what? Anybody know? It's verse... Verse 1 and 2. It starts off. He says, in the beginning was the word. I'm no, sorry, that's John chapter 1. It says, the earth was, was, was without form and void. And the Spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the earth. And then God said. God didn't say, and then the Spirit moved. Right? Pastor Phil, am I right? And I think that so many times you just take a, a scripture out of context. That's my scripture. Because somebody else used it, and they used it, and it worked for them. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. But what? The Spirit of the Lord moved first. You've got to understand, we're spirit beings created in the image of God. We're created to be a spirit being before we're created to be a flesh being. So I need to know, that there don't, there's an unction that you have that comes from the Holy One, and you know all things. What is that? The Holy Spirit. Not only will it be around you, but it'll be back in you. When when it talks about Adam and Eve being clothed with the glory, they were clothed with the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God was on them and in them. All of a sudden, they separated themselves from that, made it a choice. Okay? So, but you got to recognize, I don't want to get off in that too far, but to recognize, in order for us to walk in the fullness of what God's intended for us to walk, we've got to learn how to be led by the Holy Ghost. Let's, let's talk, then this, the rest of this is going to help us. This, I'm going to do some teaching this morning. I hope you don't mind, but this is, take a deep seat and a far away look if you need to. But you need this because I recognize that I see this all the time in ministry, in church ministry, in ministers. And I'm going, they're off. Where are they going, Lord? And that's why, that's why I'm rooted and grounded with Dr. Savell and Miss Carolyn, Pastor, what? The Word. The Word, the Word, the Word, the Word. But how? Led by the Holy Spirit. I have been in denominational churches. I have worked for big churches. I have seen, but it's just taking the word for themselves and doing what they want to do with it. The Holy Spirit's going to confirm the word with signs following. Good signs, amen? Not crazy signs. Look at this. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Say, I am a daughter or a son of God. Okay, but and then I'll go on here. Verse 25, it says, but if we hope. Hope make it not a shame, right? Right? Faith is what? The substance of things hoped for, right? So, so, if this is part, it's, it all goes together. But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it? Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. You ever get that good googly wiggly feeling, but you hadn't figured it out why it's there yet? Right? Okay? The Holy Spirit will help your infirmity, your weaknesses. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the heart knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints of God according to the what? Will of God. What's the will of God? The Word of God, right? Come on. The Word of God is the will of God, and the will of God is for the Holy Spirit to reveal that Word to you. And we know that all things, what things? The things you're praying. 
We know that all things, what, well, cause do you start a sentence with and? You do in this situation. But in true grammar, do you? No, it's a conjunction pulling from what you just read. Right? Is everybody, can y'all agree with that? I'm gonna make sure you're looking at me like a cow at a new gate. Okay? Alright, so the reality of this, do you understand that phrase? The cow is like, they're looking, anyway. All right, I'm not going to try to explain that either. Um, we know that all things that you've been praying in the Holy Ghost work together for good for those who love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. If you're a child of God, you're called according to his purpose. I'm called according to his purpose. All things whatsoever I pray out in the Spirit is the perfect will of God, but it's for my good, for my betterment. Not for something bad happening. It's for what you're praying is going to work out for your good. Okay, so, uh, and it's helping your flesh. What you're hoping for, it's helping for what you're hoping for. Because you don't yet see it yet. That's what it just said, right? But the Holy Spirit helps you and gives you faith. Let's go backwards and go to Jude 20. And we're going to read this in the Amplified. But you, beloved, build yourselves up, founded on your most holy faith, make progress, rise like an edifice, Higher and higher, praying in the Holy Spirit, guard and keep yourselves in the love of God, expect and patient, expect and patiently wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, which will bring you into, into life eternal. So what's this? Uh, you're praying in the Spirit, you're building yourselves up in your most holy faith. So what is he saying? That goes back, if you tie that back into Romans, what we were just looking at is that when you and I are praying in the Spirit, you're building yourself up in whatever you're believing for. It's the greatest. I always like it. It's like putting it in overdrive or it's like speeding up the process. You can be working. You can be faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. There's a a higher form than that. Praying in the Spirit. Why do I say that? And I can say that because that's what God said. Your most holy faith. It's most holy. There is no, there is no blemish with this one. You can confess word, the word, the word, the word, the word, the word, the word. But the moment the Holy Spirit reveals a word to you about your situation, boom, something happens. And so what happens is, is you don't necessarily know the words that you need, but you know what the Holy Spirit does. Hallelujah. He's going to reveal them to us. Amen. Look at Romans 5, 1 1 through 2. Therefore, being justified by faith. Because how did you get saved? By faith, right? That's how you got saved. How did faith come? It came by hearing. And hearing by the word of God, right? How did you hear? A preacher. Somebody told you about it, right? Because God sent them to you so that you could have a relationship with God. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace. Now, Jesus said this, and I'm not going to go there, but in John chapter, you go look at 15, 16, 17, he talks about the Holy Spirit. And you know what he calls him? He calls him what? Peace. My peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I don't give it to you as the world gives it to you. Don't let your hearts be troubled. The Holy Spirit, he says, go into Jerusalem until you be in due with power. The Holy Spirit was with them, but he wanted to be in them. And so when he says, I'm being led by the Spirit, I'm being led what's on the inside of me, not what's on the outside of me. But I have to continuously build myself up in my most holy faith, praying the perfect will of God over my situation. As I'm praying in the Spirit, I'm actually praying the perfect word of God for my situation. What has been will be again. Heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of God will never pass away. See, your mind naturally can't comprehend everything that God has for you, but he's revealing them to us by his spirit that lives on the inside of us. If, you, if you'll start praying in the Holy Ghost about whatever you're, whatever you're dealing with in your life, eventually you're going to get a word from God that reveals to you what you've been praying and never, I'm serious. This is what takes you, you want to hear Pastor Justin preach messages that seem like they're just for you. Start praying over him and this church and the Holy Ghost and watch what happens. Because when you're hungry, you will be fed. Come on. God's always looking to, to deposit himself and what he knows on the inside of you so that you can be who he's created you to be. And so that you can know who you are. Come on. But and the way he's telling us right here is, look, 
This is on the, I'm trying to build you up in your faith towards what I'm doing in your life. Because whenever you're praying in the spirit, you're praying the perfect will for your life. What is the perfect will? But the perfect word of God for your life. There are things that he's trying to reveal to you and me all the time. We've got to lock ourselves into the Holy Spirit and meditate in the word day and night. Because the Holy Spirit's not going to separate himself from the word. All right, continue. Here we go. Um, Peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith. How? By faith. Into this grace wherein we stand. You can't, the grace message is out there. You can't have grace without faith. Can't have, that says it right there. We have access by faith into his grace. And, and the faith is not anything except for what the word of God says about your situation. Not what you want it to be. Not what you want to make up. God just, t- no, the grace message can only be spiritually correct when it is lined up with faith in the word of the living God. By the spirit of God. Amen. And rejoice, joy, joy, come on, somebody get some joy in this house. Rejoice in hope. What's hope? Hope maketh not a shame of the glory of God. And hope maketh not a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. By the, by how? It didn't say by the word. It's shed abroad in our hearts by how? By the Holy Ghost. Your flesh does not want to love your stepmother or your, come on, your situation. Seriously, there's people in your life, in my life, that we would just rather kick in the next week and make them walk back. Right? Seriously, there are some, come on. That's your flesh, though. That's not your spirit, man. That's not the will of God for your situation. It's a reality, but you got to have faith. Even though it doesn't look like that's what's going to take, that God's doing something in that situation. And sometimes your faith is not that strong. So what do you do? Pray in the Holy Spirit. Just build yourself up in the most holy faith. There were times when I have to go to a meeting or I have to go somewhere. I'm going to go minister. Boy, I spent a lot of time praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen? Why? Because I need to be built up because I don't want my flesh acting up when I step into that situation. Come on. My natural man, the natural man receiveth not the things of God, right? So if we're going to get where God wants us to be, that perfect will of God for our life, we've got to get out of our flesh. Amen? All of my wife's smiling, laughing. <laughs> you know, wives always know more, right? Um, so let's look at this scripture. This is important. First Corinthians 2. This is all talking about being led by the Holy Spirit. Because it's a, I, 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 fa- I have found... In, in my relationship with God and, and ministering to people f- for some time now that this is, this has been, a, this is an issue in people's lives. How do I know what I'm hearing from God? How do I know that's what God wants me to do? I mean, it's not like God says, okay, go over there, get a job at Kinko's and you're going to do this and then you're going to own the company. And this is no, that's not what has, that's not what happens. You, you're led and you walk through a door and, he, and then he walks you through the next door and then you do whatever he says to do next and then you do whatever he says to do next and then all of a sudden you find yourself in a situation you kind of look around like, wow, how did I end up here? It was one step. Just put one foot in front of the other and soon you'll be walking out the door. door, door. Y'all remember that? Yeah, come on. So what are you doing though? What do you what? You just do whatever it is God's telling you to do right there at the moment. It might not make sense to your flesh, just Holy Spirit, just stay in the Word, stay in the Word. Meditate in the Word day and night, then you're like a tree planted by the rivers of water. This is so very important, but you just can't take any word that you want and just go run with it. You need to hear what the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit, and a lot of times it's just when the Holy Spirit is telling you to do whatever He's telling you to do. There's times and seasons for all of us under the sun. So we hear whatever He's telling us, then we do what He's telling us to do. Don't try to make your own way. It comes out a mess. It's not fun, right? So all these, it's not. You know, you get out there and you're kind of like, what happened, Lord? I don't know. I didn't tell you to do that yet. Like, but he helps you out anyway, right? And gets you out of the mess you're in. That's a good thing. That's, that's the net of grace. Amen? Hallelujah. All right. 
I may just be preaching to myself. I thought I told somebody, I'm going to be pulling past that. Well, I'm going to be pulling it too. So, Lord, thank you, Jesus. I need, to, I need this just as much as you do. 1 Corinthians 2, 6 through 16. And I know we're reading a lot of scriptures here, but the word of God is, is key to us. Amen? It says, how be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. Listen, to, just pay attention. Yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught or come to nothing. So some of the things you're seeing in the natural right now, don't be concerned about them. They're coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Do you ever think that what you're praying in the whole, you think, what in the world am I praying? Don't worry about it. Just have faith in it because God's promising you when you're praying in the spirit, you're praying the perfect will of God for your situation. You don't have to know the mystery at the moment, right? But if you stay in there long enough, he's going to reveal them because he says, look at this. Even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory. See, there's God, there's things that God is hitting, hidden for you. But he can't reveal them to you because you haven't done what he's told you to do before. Come on. And then some of the things that he wants you to do, you can't receive them because you're not built up enough to hear what it is he's trying to tell you. So he's building you up to make that next step that's bigger than any step you've ever taken before. Because God's not about going backwards. He's always going about forward. He's always wanting to take you higher than you've been before in the past. He's wanting to do bigger than you've ever done before. But what you did to get where you are was a lot. You feel that way, right? So you can imagine some of the things that he's wanting to tell you right now, and you couldn't handle them. So he tells you, pray, keep praying. You're building, you're getting stronger. And I believe there's times, I know this because in my own personal life, there are times where I've prayed for things for a very long time, and I'm thinking, let's get through this, come on, Lord. But I'll go to praying in the Holy Ghost, and I'm out in my morning walk, and I'm like a warrior walking down the streets in the 3 and 4 o'clock in the morning. Ain't nobody else out there. I just, me and Jesus and my angels, and just, man, there's things that I'm speaking. I'm thinking, I know they're in there. When are they going to come out? I know there's things. I just trust that what I'm praying is putting me in a position to receive what God has in store for me when it's time for him to unload on me. There are things that you'll pray out that you might not see for years. But that's okay because you, you, it's going to take you years to get there, not God years to get it to you. That make sense? So praying in the spirit is doing something more on the inside of you. And then also loosen angels. I believe with all my heart, you're praying the word of God. But it's in a language that the devil doesn't know. And that's what makes him so mad. Why do you think the church world specifically has come against tongues so much. Satan is working, trying to make sure that not everybody in the church world has this gift on the inside of them so that they can release the miraculous that only God himself could do. Satan himself even said, if, if the, the, the Bible says that if Satan had known what he, see, he didn't know what Jesus was going to do. He was clueless. He would have never crucified him. See, Satan's not as smart as you think he is, right? And you can be smarter than him when you start praying in the Holy Ghost over your situations. There's some things that he's going to make deposits that you need to keep your mouth shut about them until he tells you to talk about them. And I know we're faith people and you want to get all your faith words out there and start speaking. There's some things you need to hold on to just a little bit longer because not everybody's ready to receive them. And you definitely don't want Satan running out with them himself and trying to keep you from making that happen. Come on. Holy. So I'm trying to teach and y'all keep making me preach. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. See, I just preached that to you. I get that right, don't you? But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard. And you hear people that, well, you never know what God's going to do. Bull. Come on. That's not God's will for you not to know what he's going to do. He doesn't want Satan to know what he's fixing to do for you. Mm -hmm. Neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Do you love God? Say, I love God. But, okay, so this is one, I love but. 
Not just, I love the word but, okay? Because it cancels out everything else you just heard. Right? But, even though it says, I have not seen, ear hath not, but, but, God, Danny, stop it. Okay. <laughs> but God, who? God. Say God. God. You got to see this, man. If you want to have a conversation with God, start praying in the Holy Spirit. If you want to start hearing what it is God's trying to say to you, start praying in the Spirit. Your thoughts will become his thoughts. Come on. Don't sit there and just think your own thoughts up. Pray in the Spirit, and his thoughts will all of a sudden start becoming your thoughts. God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. His Spirit that lives on the inside of us. He's making intercession for us as we pray in the Spirit for the perfect will of God for our situation. I'm telling you, spend, if you're hitting a roadblock in your life, spend a little more time praying in the Holy Ghost over that situation. It took me five years. I get a real uh, junk in my life. Five years to receive my wife, but I would pray for my wife for 15 minutes a day no matter what. Sometimes a lot longer. Because I needed more, right? What did I do? I'm, I, I pray in the Spirit, confess. Pray in the Spirit, confess. Pray in, con- pray in the Spirit, confess the Word of God as it came up on the inside of me. So when I found my wife, I knew my wife. She knew the first time she ever heard my voice, ever. I knew the second time we talked on the phone. I met her in March. I proposed in May, and we got married in June. By the Spirit of the Lord. Why? What are you doing? You're not talking about, uh, you know, I'm claiming my wife, and this is, you know, that's, that's great. That's wonderful. You can do that. But the reality of it is, if you want a Spirit-filled person that God has intended for you, to last through eternity, let God pick your wife. Let God pick your husband. Quit you trying to figure it all out. I, I don't know why I'm preaching on that. Just I need to get away from that. Okay, all right. Somebody must be believing in here. Amen. Or out there, whoever's listening to what's going on here. Okay, for what man knoweth the things of a man? See, you don't even know what you want. Booyah. I'm not, that's the truth. I tried, I, I, my, I don't need to go into my testimony. Thank you, Jesus. But I tried, I, I dated a lot of, a lot of women in my life. Thank you, Jesus, for Cassie. Everybody say, praise God. Praise for God. Pastor Cassie. Yeah. Amen. Because, I, I, you know what I did? I had to get out of my head. That's why I knew my wife when I talked to her. Because one of the confessions, the Lord had me confess as I'd pray in the spirit that I'd know my wife on the inside before I ever knew her on the outside. I said, Lord, just please make her pretty. So, but the reality I knew on the inside of me, and she's beautiful. So, you know, but, but I was like, but I, but that would come out of my heart. Cause my mind, cause your natural mind, you think this would be perfect and, or this would be the perfect house and you buy it and, and everything's busted on the inside. You think that's it. And you're going, Oh, this is a headache. Why? Because you went with your flesh, not what God was saying. No, it's not the car for you. Come on. <laughs> Come on. There's things, but and more important, that's life. I'm talking, about, you're, I'm talking about my wife. You're talking about eternity. It's what you want it to be. Trust the God that's on the inside of you to reveal the things that you're believing for in your life, even better than what you can think it to be. I'm telling you, I, my wife knows this. I tell her, you're exceedingly abundantly above all that I can ask of her thing. This thing, there were, I would, man, I was amazed at how perfect she was for me. And even better, God showed me things that I wanted that I didn't even know I wanted until I got her. Come on. But that's, uh, that's in any area of your life. He wants to do that in every, he wants to do that exceedingly abundantly above. But if your flesh is constantly warring against what his spirit's trying to give you, which is the best, then you're never going to obtain what his best is. You'll always settle for second best. And nobody likes being second best. Right? Right? Hmm. Hallelujah. All right. Praise the Lord. Say, thank you, Jesus. All right. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. Now, we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, 
but which the Holy Ghost teacheth. See, you have an unction that comes from the Holy One. You know all things. It's called the Holy Spirit. Jesus, see, he will teach you. Jesus said this himself. He will teach you all things. Somebody say all. Somebody say todo. That means the same thing. If you're in Texas, most of you had to take Spanish at some point in time because that's just part of it. All means all in any language you put it in. So if you're having an issue, tap into the Holy Spirit. You know, here's the thing, and you need to go back and listen to what Pastor Phil preached, because here's the thing about it is, when you and I and all of us together are in one accord in the Spirit, when we're all praying in the Spirit, then when we come in here, we will be a magnet for marvels, wonders, and extraordinary manifestations of God's greatest. Now, listen to this, not just for us, but for this world. Let me tell you something, 9-11 just happened again. I was preaching a revival in a Baptist church on 9-11. And 17 Baptist people, including the head deacon, the pastor's wife, the kid, they got filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Because when something like that takes place, you're like, I need to know why, what, what's going on. And let me tell you something. The world right now is in a mess. And people are looking. I'm telling you, they're going to walk through these doors. And when you and I and all of us are in one accord, when all of us are constantly in the spirit realm, we're constantly praying in the spirit, building ourselves up. When we're all built up, not coming in here weak and broken, I'm just here to get a good message from pastor today. Come on. When you come in here with, man, I'm ready to come with it. I'm ready to worship. I'm ready to get in here. Pastor, that was part of Pastor Phil's message this morning. His praise and worship is a, is something that will set us apart from any other church that's going on. Come on. We got to see this. And you and I, we come in here, we're filled, we're already filled up before we get here. Imagine what somebody walks through that door. They're like, whoa, what's going on in here? And the glory of God setting in on this place. We're going to see marvels, wonders, and extraordinary manifestations. But it's not just going to be because of one person, not just because Pastor Phil's preaching or Pastor Justin's preaching or Dr. Savelle's preaching. It's going to be because we as a body of believers have chosen not to live in this world or like this world, but live according to the word of God and be so filled up. That's what spirit-filled, it didn't say half full. It's the spirit-filled Christians, right? We're not supposed to just be a little, a little dab doesn't do you. Okay? So when we get, we get this going in, in our lives, in our own personal lives, we're learning how to operate this. Man, we're seeing breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough. So we bring breakthrough into this room. And so when people come in here, they, they laugh. I get my pre, I get my preach going with y'all. What's the, they, they, but the reality, people need it, and we're the we're the body of Christ that's supposed to be. We're the body. He's the head. We, we're the we're the hands. We're the ones that are supposed to be releasing this, and we are. Say, I am going to release marvels, wonders, and extraordinary manifestations. Of God's greatness. So good. You know, Colossians right there, Christ in me, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Right? Okay, so which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but that which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned, but he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct them? But we have the mind of Christ. How do we tap into the mind of Christ? By praying in the Spirit. By meditating the Word. The, Lord, the Holy Spirit, do me a favor. If you're a believer, just read the whole Bible one time. Just once. So God has something to remember, to remind you of. Right? Just one time. Just one time. Because the Bible says he'll call all things to your remembrance. He can't bring something to you that you ain't never read before. Right? You cannot pull something out of a database that doesn't have anything in it. Come on. You, the Holy Spirit's not going to direct you outside of the word of God. He's not going to tell me something. Read, just read it one time at least. Read the Bible in a year. Do whatever you got to do. Just read it once. And man, a, a scripture will pop up to you and you'll think, where is that? And you read it one time, but the Holy Spirit reminds you of it. Because you, you never know when you're going to need that one spirit. 
Or that one, well, that one scripture. Right? <laughs> anyway. Holy. Smile. Make me think you're happy. <laughs> All right. Colossians 3. 15 through 17. Just a couple more scriptures and I'll be done. It says, and let the peace of God. I love this. And uh, I think it's the Amplified. The Holy Spirit. Act as an umpire. Have you ever, ever been in a ball game? Uh, they blow that whistle. They call you out. Whatever. You know. Just seriously. Okay. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Pastor Phil preached about that this morning. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, wisdom by the Holy Ghost, right? Teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. This is some of what Pastor Phil was talking to us about this morning. Singing with grace in our hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Verse 23, it repeats it. And whatever you do, do it heartily as unto God, not as unto man. You see, when you and I start operating the spirit, we get out of the flesh. We get out of the natural realm. We tap into the supernatural realm. And when the supernatural realm is in existence, then supernatural things can happen. When it's not, then it can't. Right? Make sense? Last scripture, Isaiah 55, and this is going to be the last one. Isaiah 55, 3, and then 8 through 11. Now, this is this was the prophet prophesying about what you and I are talking about. This was before we had 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and we had everything else that I've been talking to you about, right? This is before then, but you got to see this, okay? So incline your ear, come unto me, hear, and your soul shall live. How many of you are tired? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> Think about this. How many of you feel weary? He says, my burden is easy and my yoke is light. How many of you are worn out? I got a, that's a great indication you're in the flesh. Just a reality. His burden is easy and his yoke is light. How many of you don't have peace? Because he just said he is peace. All right? So, and then this is one of those things. Remember what? So I surrender all. Just surrender all. There's some areas in our lives. And those, some areas will take all of our attention just to that. And we don't see all the other great things that God's doing in our lives. We've got to roll that area of our life over in the Lord, just like we let all those other areas of our lives over on the Lord so that he can manifest his glory in that area of my life. Right? And so how do you do that? You build yourself up praying in the Holy Spirit over that. So incline your ear unto me, hear, and your soul shall live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heaven are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Listen to this. So shall my word. Now remember, the word of God is by faith. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Okay? Your most holy faith is praying in the spirit. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. When you and I are praying in the spirit, we are praying the perfect word of God over our situation. It has to be because it cannot separate itself from the spirit and the word won't separate itself. So as you and I are praying, all of a sudden, God's word is going forth to do what it said it's going to do in that area of your life. Your faith begins to rise because as I pray in the spirit, when I felt like I was weak, I all of a sudden become strong because I don't know exactly how God's going to do it, but something on the inside of me telling me he's doing it. And I have to trust more in what his word says than what my flesh feels like. I have to trust more in what his spirit is urging me to do than what everybody else is telling me it's going to be like. I've got to cling to rely upon the word of God, which is breathed by the Holy Spirit on the inside of me as I pray in the spirit. And let that word be a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I need to hide that word within my heart so that I may not sin against them, so that the Holy Spirit can bring it out of me even when I don't feel like it. 
And when I'm doing that, and I just constantly stay in that, all things start happening for you. Boom, boom, boom. And you're just doing what it is God's told you to do. When you do what it is God's telling you to do, he automatically does everything he's already promised. He's already done. Amen? It's just you and I walking in that, fulfilling that in that area of my life. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. It shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Let me tell you something. God's not slack in one of his promises. God needs us in our faith. God cannot do anything except by faith. Faith is what moves mountains. Not your need. And sometimes your need's so big that you that you have a hard time meditating. Pr- start praying. Your spirit. I, I think it's very, very interesting. Y'all know what Dr. Savelle went through a couple of years ago. But it wasn't the word of God that came out of Dr. Savelle's mouth. It was praying in the spirit that came out of Dr. Savelle's mouth. Praying in the spirit, praying in the spirit, praying in the spirit. And this went on for a couple of weeks. Praying in the spirit. Couldn't say anything. Praying in the spirit. I believe with all my heart, he was, the Holy Spirit was, was rekindling what he'd already placed on the inside of him and all. And that's why, if you want to know how come he doesn't have any symptoms and all those things aren't in his life anymore is because it wasn't natural. It was not, there was nothing natural about it. It was totally supernatural. It was birthed out of what he placed on the inside of him. It welled up on the inside of him. As he began to pray in the spirit, I'm telling you, there are dreams that are on the inside of you that you're thinking, oh, i got to put those on the back. But go ahead, put them, in, put them in the hands of God. Start praying in the spirit. Anytime they come to your mouth, say, thank you, Father, you have that. Just start praying in the spirit over that until you get a piece about it and go on about your business. Roll the key, continuously roll the care of that over on the Lord because he cares for you. He is mindful of you. He is mindful of me. And the, and the secret petitions that you place on the inside of your heart will be unveiled as you and I continue to pray in the Spirit. I'm not going to walk in all that God has called me to do by the arm of my flesh. You will never obtain what God has in store for you by what you can do. It is always going to take something that only God can do. And he's going to do it through somebody. He's going to do it some way, somehow. But I guarantee you he's going to do it. But you can't fight in the flesh. That's not where your battles are won. Your battles are won in the spirit. Amen? Stand to your feet. Praise God. Cassie, you want to come up for a second? I'm going to have Cassie. You just be on the keys. Yes, ma'am. Lord, I'm Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord, for your word. No, no, just stay there, Cassie. Stay, Cassie, stay there. You know what? Um, hmm. Are you happy? Are you happy? It's important. When you think, you may think, well, Pastor, I don't know about, you know, why is it? It's very important. Because uh, happy on the outside is an outward expression of something that's taking place on the inside of you. You know, without, without the joy of the Lord being your strength, you can't be happy. The joy is, joy is what's in you. Happiness is an outward expression of what's taking place on the inside of you. Hmm. Glory to God. You know, there's uh, I've I've um, I've learned a few things in my own personal life, trying to determine um, some of the decisions that I needed to make, and when you especially you know you make decisions sometimes, and they affect not just you, they affect a lot of people around you. You're trying to. Make a decision, and uh, you have a, the weight of the thought processes of, of maybe multitudes. Maybe there's, you know, especially family members, people that are close to you. What's that going to look like? How's that going to affect them? And so forth. And you know what? You're not called to carry the weight of that on your shoulders. You know, and, and uh, man, God loves you. you. You may be watching or listening later on. Uh, to what we're doing um, and you're not supposed to carry that I'm not supposed to ever carry those things on me and it's so easy because the people will tell you that's your responsibility you know I roll the, my responsibilities over on the Lord you know he who began a good work in me will continue it until the day of his return 
I'm his workmanship, but so are uh, many of your kids. If, you, if you've raised your kid right, and the Bible says that, and they've asked Jesus to come into their heart, if you've come in, if you've asked Jesus, or you have a loved one that you know has asked Jesus to come into their heart, trust the hand of God in their life more than your own hand or anybody else's hand that is working in their lives. Because if they've made Jesus the Lord of their life, they have a covenant with God just like you have a covenant with God. And I have to be confident. Now, be, how do you be confident in those situations? You pray in the Spirit. You build yourself up. The, the Lord may give you scriptures for you to confess over that person in your life that you're hoping to come back to Jesus, that you're wondering, are they going to break through in that area of your life? Pray in the Spirit. Speak the word that comes out of your mouth where that person is in your life. Build yourself up in your most holy faith where that person is concerned. And be confident, just like Paul, I am confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you and that person that you're thinking about and that situation that you're facing right now, he began a work in you, Jeff. He began that work. Don't think, because a lot of times we look at all of our mistakes that we've made at points in time. Why am I am where I am right now? Because of all the mistakes I've made. No, stop. He's bigger than your mistakes. And he can change the circumstances that you're going through by your faith in him. But it takes you, it takes me, rolling the care of that over on the Lord, not taking it up again. Without that commitment, you'll keep taking it up. You got to draw a line and go, this is, you know what, this, from this day forward, this is yours, Lord. Lord, I'll do whatever you tell me to do. I'll pray in the spirit and, I, and I'll get your instructions every day. But I can't control that situation anymore in my life. I'm looking unto you, Jesus. I'm trusting you, Jesus, with my dreams. I'm trusting you. And the only way that I can trust you, Lord, is by putting my faith in you. So I choose to pray in the Holy Ghost over that situation in my life. You may have to do that every day of your life for a while. That's okay. Just watch it get better and better and better and better. And watch those people come back. Watch those people come back. Watch God do the work that he promised you that he would do in their lives. That he who began that work will continue it until the day of his return. Amen. Trust. Pray this with me. Say, Father God, I trust you with every area of my life especially people. I love them, but you love them even more. I thank you that you're working in their lives, now work in my life to develop my faith over these areas of my life. Forgive me, Lord, for taking it on my own shoulders. I give it back to you for good. I give them to you for good. In Jesus' name, amen.